I did my uh, speech on uh, net neutrality, and net neutrality is basically like a means for having equality over the internet. So um, it's basically like a company such as an internet provider, such as like Verizon or AT and T, can't uh, discriminate on a certain like uh, search engine or website such as Google, since they pay them more, because that would be unfair and like it wouldn't allow the smaller companies or like you know anonymous companies to grow. And um, I chose this issue because I think that uh, a lot of us like for even for uh, a speech like this. We use the internet as a resource, and imagine if um, we just got all the biased opinions for our topics, such as like opinions from a big company as uh, CNN or a news company that is actually like like ABC News is biased on some topics, as we can see, and the news just wasn't or the uh, information for the topic wasn't just given to us. So net neutrality. Um, there was an article about it on uh, freepress.net. And um, they, uh, they stated that net neutrality has always been a part of the internet. In fact, it's because of net neutrality that the internet has driven economic innovation, democratic participation, and free speech online. Net neutrality protects the consumer's right to use any equipment, content, application, or service without interference from a network provider. So again, that's stating like how um, it provides like equality over the internet and doesn't discriminate against like companies. And uh, imagine if the nation's largest telephone company and cable companies, including Comcast, AT and T, Verizon, and Time Warner Cable, want to be internet gatekeepers, deciding which website goes fast or which won't let it all. So like, if if Google was to pay out AT and T as their provider, and so you go on the internet and um, go to Google.com and then. Google.com for some reason is not working and you would want to go to Yahoo and that's completely blocked off. That would be because Google has paid more money to AT&T or whatever your net provider is and um, has basically blocked off Yahoo from that. And uh, <coughs> how it impacts uh, surfers is, like, like I was saying, it's basically on the unbiased or biased um, reasoning. There's a uh, Websites like obviously Wikipedia isn't the best website to go to, but some of it is biased, some of it isn't biased. And uh, small, I, I feel like small um, websites that have uh, the topics like of your liking or like that you're searching would be less biased as to like um, see it like big internet companies like CNN and stuff like that. And uh, also for like small businesses that are trying to get big over the internet, like when you go on Google and you search a topic, like you, you can see like um, fitness searches and like fitness posts by the bigger companies, like the news companies, and then you can also see like websites that you've never seen before that are like small and trying to get their um, company out there for, it can be for news, it can be for anything. And that helps them like grow, that helps them um, get the word out and like, I don't know, just become a bigger company and more trustworthy. And it helps like, it really helps create a free market competition between all the companies. And it doesn't like, it's the same thing. <laughs> but also like, if regulation were to happen, such as the SOPA and the PIPA, and that's basically arguing against the net neutrality point, then it would be just like the countries in, uh, such as North Korea and China would block off a lot of stuff from the internet and don't allow like people to search it because and that causes a lot of controversy. People try to like rebel against it. They try to like hack the servers and stuff like that. So it would be just an overall um, better thing to pass net neutrality. And uh, yeah, that's it.
All right, well, you identify the subject, but not what your claim is. I don't get a propositional statement until right at the very end, and then you kind of give this propositional statement that net neutrality is something that we ought to pass. So it turns out that your proposition is a policy claim at the end of the speech as opposed to the beginning of the speech. There's no preview of what the supporting material is going to be, so listening, uh, if the listeners are not... Uh, paying full attention, if they're not focused, they may not hear any distinct claims, secondary issues that you're talking about. The main secondary issue that you develop is a question of bias, but all you have is uh, hypotheticals on the bias. You say, for instance, you know, suppose some site like CNN is biased. Well, you take that as a given without giving us any proof that they are biased. I don't hear any uh, examples of bias. I don't hear any authorities who say they're biased. There's no way that it's measured statistically in terms of bias. Uh, it's just a presupposition that's built into the speech and needs some proof. Uh, there's not really an internal structure to follow. We just have to kind of understand the process. You kind of define what the issue of net neutrality is. I still think it's a little bit vague, but you start off with one definition. Your second definition, I think, was a bit clearer. Uh, I didn't hear any source citations in the presentation. You did mention in passing one article that you read, uh, and you kind of referred to a lot of hypothetical examples. Google versus Yahoo, what happens if so or PIPA get passed, then we'll be like North Korea. So we've got some hypothetical examples in these situations. I think that that's perhaps a little hyperbole, uh, the notion that we'll suddenly become North Korea when it comes to information online. But I understand the, the idea that there would be some way that the content would be regulated according uh, to your belief. Uh, that sounds to me like you're, if you're saying if we fail to pass net neutrality. Uh, so I think you need to explain how net neutrality would work and why it's going to provide uh, advantages over over the system that we have currently. If what we're doing currently is working, then why do we need to change? Because that sounds like what you're suggesting at the end is that we need to have some rule or law that puts net neutrality in place, and I'm not sure that you've demonstrated that anything that we have now is threatened, either because of technological innovation or because of the way corporations want to access um, the Internet or because of... Uh, internet service providers and the way that they want to charge for any of these kinds of things, there need to be some explanation about why all that would be necessary. Uh, and I think that that's uh, a problem that you don't really uh, resolve here. All right. Thank you.